into a storefront uh, Abyssinian church, and those walls were shaking. The people were talking to God. I felt God in that room. I have been later on in my life in St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York on a Christmas Eve. There was God. I felt God in that cathedral. I have been at 777 Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn with the Hasidim, the uh, Orthodox Jewish people, when there were thousands of men in black garb, packed shoulder to shoulder, meeting God on the Sabbath. I have felt God in that room. I have been in a straw hut in the Fiji Islands drinking kava kava with the Fijian people as they were chanting. I don't know who was in that room, but I certainly wasn't in the room alone with only those seven men. So there are many places on earth where the people can find unity and find God. And uh, I have been lucky enough to have it a few times. At this time in my life, perhaps I'm too isolated alone and too much of a recluse. I'm not comfortable in any group setting in religion. I don't know what it is, but I, I just don't know why I've walked away from the whole package. I have on my desk my Bible, the Old Testament, with dozens if not hundreds of yellow tabs in it. You know, post-its. I told you about this Bible many times. It's been photographed to put on my website, michaelsavage.com. It's not there now. Because I want you to understand I'm not just making this stuff up. When things go real bad, we all tend to reach for something other than, uh, you know, a glass of whiskey or a, or a cigarette. And I think most people will admit that at certain points, you have to believe in something. As my mother taught me, everyone has to believe in something. And many will say, well, I don't believe in God. And I've told you before that if you're an atheist who believes in nothing, then you believe in something, and that something is nothing. I know it sounds like a joke, but you do believe in something if you believe in nothing. You know, so try to hit this empty. Try to make this world, try to go through this world empty. I don't think you're going to get too far. And I think that's why so many people do fall into the hole of drugs or the hole of drugs, uh, of drugs or, or, or alcoholism or whatever it is. And uh, we all struggle with this. We're all struggling. None of us have a halo. And uh, there's nothing to rejoice in in some ways. And there's everything to rejoice in in some ways. So, I mean, I'm going around in circles because it's summertime and I have that feeling of a kid at the end of June rather than July where the school year is still on but there's only a few more days and he can't look at one more book. He has to close the books. He can't. His, he look, opens a book and it's so hot outside and he sees the flies buzzing right outside the screen of the schoolyard and he hears the birds outside the window. And he doesn't want to be in that room anymore. He wants to be outside, and he wants to be free, and he wants to walk in the clean sunlight of the day. But he's stuck inside that room, and that's where I am today. In that day a man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made for themselves to worship to the moles and to the bats. And the idols shall, shall utterly pass away, and men shall go into the caves of the rocks and into the holes of the earth from before the terror of the Lord and from the glory of his majesty when he has ariseth to shake mightily the earth. Isaiah. What does it mean? Whatever you want it to mean. Or nothing, depending upon your viewpoint. New York City, W.O.R. John, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yes, sir. My personal belief is however the universe works and whatever it has in store for us is just that. And irrespective of what belief system we believe in, whatever is going on in this world is going to happen to us, and we can believe in Judaism, Christianity. So you it's think you're just a leaf in a stream going downstream, and there's nothing you can do as a leaf? I'm sorry? You believe that you are like a leaf thrown into a stream... And uh, you're just moving along in that stream and that you have no effect upon the stream itself. I believe that I have an effect on this world if I choose to. But, but you're, saying, wait, you're saying you have no free, free identity and free association? You can't make your life become what it should be? You can't alter situations and affect the outcome of your life? I certainly can, but not after death. As I said, however the universe works... And yeah, but wait, 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 wait. I, I want to back up on this, because many people think that they're just leaves in a stream, and they have no effect upon their destiny. You don't believe that, though. No, I do believe that in my destiny as far as if I decide to be a bum who's drinking on the corner or a Ph.D. like yourself. But once we die... It's up to the universe, and just because you believe in Christianity doesn't necessarily... Wait, wait, what do you mean by it's up to the universe? What is up to the universe once we die? 
that I don't know, and I don't believe that anybody knows. And just because we subscribe to a particular theory, I understand. What, I don't. What do you believe that your acts, while you are living, will have any effect upon uh, what happens afterwards? I don't know, but I will tell you that I definitely try to do the right thing in life, just in case. Uh, that's uh -huh. sure. All right. Well, I, well, there's many reasons to do the right thing. Some of them are based upon uh, selfish motives, such as just in case. And I, I have ascribed to that as well. I want to gamble that there is a judgment day. And so, you know, not necessarily because I'm such a good person. Savage. Religious proselytizers, nymphomaniacs, liberals. And uh, here we are in the Savage Nation, many years later. And we're talking about religion. And I, I don't know how I stumbled onto this. But I raised the question that I, that uh, a question arose from me to the audience where I said, were you once uh, of, born into a religion, then you went to another religion, and then went back to your original religion, and why, why, why? The essay question, not the short answer. And I remember how this uh, a question arose once. I was once sitting in Berkeley, as a matter of fact, in the 70s, in a, um, in a Jewish... It was on a Sabbath. There was to be a discussion before a dinner. The dinners were incredible. In fact, the food was as much a part of the religion as any. And you got to remember that food is a big part of any religion. If it's a good religion, food is a big part of it. <laughs> it's what gets the people in and keeps <laughs> coming back. But the dinners were great. They were communal dinners. Everyone would help cook and eat and drink. Lots of drinking. But before the dinners, there was there was some conversation, and there was a rabbi who was talking. And he was known as a very, um, how should, I mean, there's all levels of everything. This guy was known as very insightful, let's put it to you that way. And he said something once. He was a, a, an interesting guy. I mean, he wasn't like, you know, Zeus sitting up on a mountaintop. He looked a little bit like Woody Allen, as a matter of fact, very soft-spoken. And he said that all religions are good, but the religion you were born into was the religion that you meant to follow, is what he said to the group. And somehow that stuck with me. He also once a, a cat or dog walked in, in the middle of the discussion into this house of prayer. And everyone went, oh, oh, there's a dog. Get it out. Get it out. And he said, no, no, no. It's probably somebody who was Jewish when they were a person. And he's, he's lonely. He wants them to come back and see some friendly people, which I thought was very unusual for a religious setting. Anyway, but those days are long gone. It was a spiritually interesting period, the 70s in America. And many, many interesting things occurred and many interesting people occurred. And uh, things were in some ways phenomenally elevated. Don't underestimate all of, all of what happened in the 70s. Don't write it all off as pornography, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah, that rose up in that time. But so did a lot of other great things rise up in that time as well. You know, it all came up. There was so much ferment and so much creativity in America that everything came up, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So here we are now. And I don't know whether to say we are living in a cynical time, a more cynical time. When was it not a cynical time in America? The 50s, you're saying, wasn't a cynical time. Behind the ad men? What was behind the ad men? Behind the button-down guy? Uh, behind mad men? If you, we talked about it yesterday. What was go the good, the bad, and the ugly? Now, there is a new element, of course, socially, and uh, that's why we have Obama, who was a faker as president, which is the high degree of drug usage in the population. And the supersaturation of entertainment has melted down the American mind to the point that a, a, a fraudster and a huckster like this could actually get away with being a president and push open communism and not be seen for it, except by a few people. Savage. Eloquent in their own way. Armstrong and Getty. Weekday morning, 6 to 10. Talk 910 KNEW. Let's go to Los Angeles, okay? The show is heard all across the country, as you know. Let's start on KGIL in L.A. Earl, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, Michael. i, I got to tell you, I love you so much, and you are doing such a great job, brother. I've been with you, for at least for the last year, listening to you. 